Hi, this is Jason Ellis, and I want to do a demo today of this computer that I've been working on for the Georgia Tech Library Archives um, Emerging uh, Retro Computing Lab. Uh, the computer that I'm working on is this PowerPC-based uh, Apple Power Macintosh 8500-120. Uh, it has 80 megabytes of RAM, um, a 2 gigabyte hard drive, CD-ROM drive, a 3.5 inch floppy disk drive, and I have installed on it System 7.5.5 uh, and a bunch of other software that might be useful for the library and also for students and for scholars who uh, will be using the retro computing resources, the vintage computing resources, at the Georgia Tech uh, Library Archives. So let's turn the camera over to the screen here and we'll get the computer booted up and I'll talk through some of the software that we have installed on it. So Mac OS 7.5 is booting. We see the disinfectant in it. Uh, we have some of the um, extensions loading up across the bottom of the screen. QuickDraw 3D, uh, QuickDraw GX, uh, QuickTime 3, uh, the Random House software, After Dark, Sound Manager, uh, the PC Exchange, and the Adobe Typhon Manager, uh, QuickTime Video Conferencing. And we're coming up to the desktop now. And I'm going to zoom the camera in just a little bit so that we can see more of the screen. Speak up the lighters, it's ready. So you can see one of the first uh, things, and you heard one of the first things about this installation, is I have uh, speakable items uh, installed as part of um, the PowerTalk software. Uh, so why don't we do a couple of uh, demos with that. Um, I've noticed that with the um, microphone that I have hooked up to the computer that for some reason it's not picking up um, my voice when I say computer which is the default keyword for invoking speakable items. So I have the clear button on the keyboard uh, which you can see underneath the Connie persona here, clear. Uh, being the key that I can hold down to activate her listening uh, for my commands um, to do uh, scripted actions on the computer. So for example, I hold down clear. You can see she's concentrating. You can see my voice is registering. What time is it? It's 9.25. What day is it? Sunday, June 22nd. So after each successful understanding of the command, you hear a click sound and then um, the persona uh, then responds to um, the command uh, that I just gave. And the screen uh, is going in and out a little bit color-wise. I'll make sure I have the video cable connected properly. Okay. So other things you can do with speakable items are uh, to change the view of a finder window. So if I open the hard drive icon here, archives, with a double click, sort by name, sort by name, sort by size sort by size. 
you can see there's probably a reason why uh, Apple uh, didn't continue fully developing the software. Um, but if I go into the Apple menu here and then go down to speakable items, I can see what the commands are. And I can see that I was actually saying the wrong thing. I want to say view window by date icon name small icon. So let's try some of those. View window by date. And then it reorders all of the folders by date. View folder by small icon. And then it changes everything to small icon. View window by icons. And then it gives you the normal size icons. So a few other things about uh, Mac OS 7.7.5. Uh, I'll go to the Apple menu and go to About This Macintosh. You can see System Software 7.5.5, Power Macintosh. We have 80 megs of memory. You running virtual memory, uh, which you want to do if you're, especially if you're using a Power Macintosh or Power PC based computer, uh, saves uh, additional RAM uh, from the uh, applications when they're running. And then if we go down through the Apple menu, you can see some of the software that uh, comes preloaded. Uh, we have the Apple Video Player, which the uh, Power Mac 8500. Uh, 120 has built-in AV capabilities. You have video in and out at 640 by 480 resolution, um, which was one of the, the cool things about this computer when I originally had one um, during my freshman year at Georgia Tech was being able to hook the computer up to the television, uh, to cable, uh, to my PlayStation, uh, and record small video clips uh, long before that became uh, something much easier to do. Uh, but with the computer also, it originally came bundled with the Avid uh, video editing software, which unfortunately I don't have a copy of now. We also see Apple CD audio player software, uh, precursor to iTunes, allowed you to um, play CDs, you could shuffle the music, you could set an order to the songs. We have things like the Venerable Calculator, we have the Chooser for selecting printers, um, we have the Find File feature, uh, Graphing Calculator, uh, which does a demo of some of the capabilities of the PowerPC processor. So if I were to go to like Demo and say choose 3D Surfaces, it begins graphing out for us uh, Z equals XY, which gives us this kind of cool curve to look at. I'll stop that, file and quit. Uh, some of the other software installed included um, uh, OpenDoc, uh, which is something that I still don't completely understand. I think it was a really neat concept at the time of being able to um, make uh, documents more application agnostic so that you could drag and drop the editing elements into a document that you wanted to create or work on rather than building a workflow around different applications. Uh, so it kind of upended the, the normal process which we still use to today uh, because you know OpenDoc um, has you know, gone away essentially. And then if we go into the control panel, take a look at some of the things here. Uh, we see things like um, the OpenDoc editor setup uh, control panel. Uh, we have the speech control panel, which uh, controls text to speech and speakable items. So, speakable items currently turned on. You can set it up to say speakable alerts for like alerts that show up on the, s the screen. change what phrase alert it's not my fault blast oh dear rats yow whoa excuse me and you can even edit the phrase list if you want
You can select different voices. For Connie, I selected the Victoria, which is one of the more advanced voices. Um, but you can also do things um, that are more like science fictional sounding, like Zarvox. That looks like a peaceful planet. That looks like a peaceful planet. Uh, you can choose like Fred. I sure like being inside this fancy computer. Isn't it nice to have a computer that will talk to you? Here's where you set up um, how it listens for your commands. And again, uh, I have it set to only activate when the clear button on the keyboard is pressed. And then with feedback, you can choose the character that you have displayed uh, in, the, in the speakable items um, uh, speech window. So right now, Connie is selected. Um, Buster is a little robot. Jay is the guy from the Apple um, Mouse Basics demo software. We have lights, green light, red light. Pat is a very sad looking character. We have Phil, which is more just like an outline of, of a character. have a more neurotic looking Raymond, Sally, and then we have Vincent, which is, you know, just a near Vincent Van Gogh. So we'll go back up and choose Connie. With Mac OS 7.5.5, there weren't uh, many features that uh, you could change uh, in terms of uh, the finder and the, the general user interface uh, elements such as the uh, menu font were pre-selected. Um, there were extensions you could install and control panels you could install such as Aaron, uh, which would make Mac OS 7.5 look like Mac OS, what Mac OS 8 was going to look like and eventually did. Uh, then more advanced software like Kaleidoscope, which allowed you to edit uh, the look and feel of uh, Mac OS. And Apple experimented with their own implementation of some of these things, uh, but ultimately um, ended those projects once Steve Jobs came back on board in Apple for a unified uh, user interface. We can see things like uh, PowerTalk setup, um, which is an a internal office uh, messaging and, and, and um, system for organizing documents, uh, sending co uh, emails to one another. We have sharing, uh, have open transport installed, so TCP IP is easy to configure. Uh, we have uh, things like we can change views universally. Uh, you can't change them on a window by window basis. Uh, like you can in Mac OS X. Uh, window Shade allows you to um, collapse a window so that now all you have left is the, the, the window bar. I think I might have misspoke whenever I mentioned uh, PowerTalk earlier, but PowerTalk is only the inner office messaging system that Apple uh, developed. Uh, then I did install After Dark Star Trek The Next Generation screensaver uh, just to um, show off what um, the sound and video basic capabilities were uh, for the computer. So I'm going to do a demo of Data Dances.
So this is one of the things that really made computers worthwhile back in the day. Oh, another cool thing, um, like right now I have the map set to Atlanta. If you type in middle of nowhere on the map control panel, it literally puts you in the middle of nowhere. And so with memory, uh, the things that you can adjust are the disk cache size um, for caching files written to and from the hard disk. Uh, the modern memory manager is turned on, virtual memory is turned on. You can also enable a RAM disk. A RAM disk is basically um, a storage space set up in RAM that your computer can access, of course, very quickly um, because the files are fetched directly from RAM rather than your hard drive. Um, but the problem with that is if you lose power, you lose anything that's in the RAM disk. Um, so this is something that's really useful for computers that have a lot of RAM um, and need faster access to those uh, files that might be stored there. So like, I can imagine um, your visualization software, photo editing software, those would be uh, the types of um, scenarios that would probably want to use a RAM disk. Okay, so I'm going to sort archives by name so we can uh, look uh, a little more easily. And you can see you know, these artifacts here, I just noticed uh, after running um, the After Dark uh, control panel that it's picked up the black border uh, from when Connie uh, shone through the black background of the After Dark screensaver. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of little bugs and quirks with Mac OS 7.5.5. But um, truth be told, 755 is light years beyond 752, which originally shipped on the Power Macintosh 8500, which was notoriously prone to uh, crashes and lockups. Uh, so as soon as System 753, which was known as System 75 Update 2, came out, um, I rushed out to get a copy on floppy disk to install because it was um, nerve-wracking how many problems I had in System 752 and so did many other people. Um, so some of the software that I've installed on here, uh, the American Heritage Dictionary, um, which is a dictionary and thesaurus software. Um, so I'm gonna open that up and I'll just do a search here for science fiction, a literary or cinematic genre in which fantasy typically based on speculative scientific discoveries or developments, environmental changes, space travel, or life on other planets forms part of the plot or background. And you can see over here on the browser list that I can see other things that um, are you know, close alphabetically. Uh, so I can also click here on sci-fi and it brings up science fiction and sci-fi, all relating to being or similar to science fiction, a sci-fi movie, a sci-fi weapon system. have Claris Works. Um, one of the neat programs I was able to install is CyberDog. CyberDog um, was one of Apple's attempts to <laughs> use OpenDoc. Uh, CyberDog is a multifunctional um, editing application and web browser. Um, so I'm just going to open CyberDog. And this computer is not connected to the internet right now, so it's not going to be able to get online uh, to fetch anything. Uh, but you can see this basic notebook that opened up um, are links basically for different things. Like these links here uh, are web pages, uh, email links, uh, links to uh, like local area network, the Apple Talk network, uh, Apple software downloads, an FTP site. Um, 
let's look around. So uh, I can go File, New, and that opens a new notebook that I can create um, for, you know, create uh, a new document for organizing, uh, I, I guess for writing and other things. Let's see what I can do with this thing. New item, FTP, a gopher site, telnet link, a URL, new category. So I can add these categories and then links to those things. And I can even set this as a default netbook, um, maybe based around what you normally would look at online. Uh, you can also use CyberDog for checking mail and news groups. And I can just simply go to the CyberDog menu and choose Connect To to type in an address to connect to. The problem with Apple, uh, with OpenDoc, though, um, I, I don't know if it was a, if it was simply Apple didn't communicate well how you could use it, or if they couldn't get enough developers on board to build um, the OpenDoc editors that that interoperated in within its framework. Um, or a combination of these things, but it was something that I found um, challenging to wrap my head around um, at the time, and um, it's unfortunate because it is a neat idea, but it just my, maybe wasn't the right time or wasn't implemented very well. I also installed the open, I mean not open source, but the freeware disinfectant antivirus software, uh, which can scan the hard drive, but it also has an extension running in the background. Uh, disk copy for copying floppy disk and making uh, copies of optical disk as well. Uh, I installed um, HyperCard Player and HyperCard 2.4.1, so you can create HyperCard stacks on here. Uh, the Internet Connection Kit from Apple includes uh, different tools, including uh, the Netscape Navigator Browser, um, FTP program, Telnet program, other things that, that are useful in the early days of getting online. Uh, JPEG View is a good uh, basic image uh, viewer. Uh, Mandel Browser is a, um, a Mandelbrot creator, so I can open this up. And based on a palette, uh, it can begin generating the Mandelbrot set. Magnify. In that area I selected, it magnifies. I can choose maybe uh, Classic Julia set. Magnify. And so you can just keep zooming in as much as you want on the specific areas that you choose to zoom in on. And you can save those images as well. Uh, Netscape Communicator for getting online, doing email, news groups. Um, the Neuromancer Trilogy, this is the um, ebook software that I wrote about in, my, in the conclusion of my dissertation. And so I can open this by going into the library. And I know I have a demo of this also on, on YouTube uh, from using it on my uh, one of my power books. Uh, but this shows it working pretty much the same here on uh, this um, Power Macintosh. I'm using the arrow keys now just to move through the contents. I can click here on the author's afterword, which is only available in this ebook uh, that Gibson wrote about the ephemerality of technology. 
and I can just mouse to the top and then choose to quit HyperCard, which is what uh, the library software, the library is just a HyperCard stack. Uh, project X is another neat um, defunct um, software project from Apple. Uh, it was designed to be a 3D um, browser, a way of organizing information um, on the World Wide Web. And this was a plugin that you could install in your browser and um, kind of fly through the link. So I'm just going, right now what I'm doing is clicking with my mouse and holding the but mouse button down and, and moving where I want to go. So I'm going to go to Society and Culture. You can see the, the green button is like a major heading. The gray buttons are secondary headings. Uh, then purple in the back are third level. Uh, then these orange are fourth level. And it keeps going back and back and back. And you can just keep uh, flying through. So I'm going to cyber culture. I can see electronic freedom, cyber babies, alt culture, um, Encarta on the record, uh, Bill of Rights for um, electronic something or other. And you would click on these and they would open up your browser and take you to that particular website that's linked here. Um, Web, uh, your Project X, which is also called Hot Sauce, was a, a really neat concept, um, but it never got a chance to mature. Um, so you can imagine if this could be tied dynamically uh, to uh, an RSS feed or tied dynamically to um, um, a content management platform like, say, WordPress or Drupal, uh, it could auto-generate maps for complex websites or uh, conglomerates of websites to allow people to fly through data like what we imagine in William Gibson's Neuromancer. I have QuickTime VR installed. Um, so with this, uh, you know, we can... Um, navigate 3D spaces and look at 3D objects from within QuickTime. So like this is Disneyland. And this is the entrance. So you can see the statue here of Walt Disney and Mickey Mouse and the Magic Kingdom in the background. And I'm just kind of looking around at the scenery. You also look at uh, exterior of the BMW car. BMW around this time uh, was doing some um, cooperation with Apple uh, for like commercials and so it's a little doubt that, that Apple you know, um, helped develop this uh, for them showing off their cars on the website and also on CD-ROMs. I also installed the um, Webster's, the Random House Webster's Dictionary So I'll look up science fiction here, and it gives a much simpler definition, a form of fiction that draws imaginatively on scientific knowledge and speculation. More to the point, I like that. Uh, SCSI probe is for looking at uh, the SCSI chain internal to the um, uh, power Macintosh word that's connected externally to the um, external 25 pin uh, SCSI port. Um, we have shrink wrap for. I just noticed the camera quit uh, recording. Uh, I don't know if maybe I hit a 30 minute mark and it just automatically uh, quits recording uh, or if there's a file size limit uh, for each recorded clip. Uh, so I'm not quite sure where it might have got cut off there, but uh, just continuing where I was. Um, you know, I have the Random House Webster's Dictionary installed. Uh, SCSI Probe is for looking at the SCSI chain. Uh, shrink Wrap is for um, breaking up uh, larger files into smaller chunks to go across floppy disk. 
Uh, Spectra VR is a really cool um, um, wire mesh uh, 3D game uh, from back in the day, kind of like Tank Warfare um, before um, Mech Warrior before Mech Warrior, that sort of thing. I have Wolfenstein 3D installed, uh, so you can go in and kill Nazis, and then also Virtual PC. Um, so before uh, we had Intel-based Macintosh computers, the only way to access or run Windows was either through a compatibility card, which was um, a card you would add to the computer that had basically a full PC on it, including an Intel processor, or you could run uh, a PC software through emulation. And the PowerPC platform was, you know, they prided it on its speed and its ability to do this. So, you know, for much less money than buying a compatibility card, you could run Virtual PC and do almost as much as you could do with the compatibility card uh, for running uh, PC software. So if I open Virtual PC, We'll start up Windows 95. So now I'm booting Windows 95 through emulation on Virtual PC, running on System 755 on a Power Macintosh 8500-120. Welcome Windows startup sound. And we have now uh, a, you know, a virtual PC running on top of System 755. And then you can see the start menu here underneath Connie. I should have closed that window, but I neglected to do so. But you can see we have um, programs that are already installed, including our early version of Internet Explorer. I'm going to go ahead and choose to shut down and shut down the computer. Yes. And then we're back to Mac OS 7.5.5. Show you quickly uh, Wolfenstein 3D.
And then the last thing I wanted to show is this WordPerfect. Oh, I actually have WordPerfect also installed, WordPerfect 3.1 in addition to Claris Works 4. Uh, but this is the World Wide Web Yellow Pages. And this is another neat artifact of the early days of the internet where um, you know, IDG Books put this together. And it's basically uh, an alphabetical listing of websites uh, based around uh, different subject types. Um, and when I was visiting with the Georgia Tech Archives the other day, uh, one of the archivists, Wendy Hengemeyer, uh, noticed that they were using Library of Congress uh, subjects. Uh, so you can browse through this, you can search through this for different websites. It would be interesting to find out which of these are still you know, functioning, because I imagine you know, a lot's changed um, in the many years since this thing was originally created. Okay, so that was just a very brief uh, run through of Mac OS 755 running on this Power Macintosh 8500. Um, you can see that things have changed a lot. One thing to note also is when I click on the menu bar at the top, I'm having to hold my mouse down, the mouse button down, um, while I do so. If I only click one time, it doesn't stick. That wasn't uh, something introduced until Mac OS 8. Um, so you can see the Finder here. Uh, the Apple Guide and Help menu here. Special menus where you get to things like clean the desktop, uh, erase a disk, uh, shut down, restart, sleep. Uh, you can label documents. Uh, the View uh, menu is for open windows. Uh, the Basic Edit menu and the File menu for like, creating a new folder, open something, get info on it, uh, change the sharing settings for a folder or file make an alias, uh, put away a, um, an external disk or floppy disk. And then of course the Apple menu again, uh, where we have some basic things uh, that come uh, built, you know, can, included with Mac OS 755. Oh, and one other last thing I'll show is the scrapbook. And so with the scrapbook, this was a place where you could build a library of graphics and sounds and movies that you could then drag and drop into other programs. Um, but with drag and drop, you could just as easily do this by you know keeping the files on your hard drive somewhere or on a floppy disk, um, and then bringing them in when you need them. So that's all uh, for right now. Uh, you know, thanks for watching uh, these videos. Um, I'll. And if you have any questions, make sure you leave a comment or you can uh, shoot me an email uh, at dynamicsubspace at gmail.com. Thanks.